three. Here's Sassy Sue, and Sassy Sue says Land Cruiser Midwest is taking you nowhere. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Sassy Sue says, Land Cruiser Midwest is taking you somewhere. Let's go. Like, share, and subscribe. Sassy Sue here, and Land Cruiser Midwest says he will be... <laughs> This Land Cruiser Midwest is taking you somewhere. So let's go. Like, share, and subscribe right now. Land Cruiser Midwest is taking you somewhere. Wonder Chrissy, we just got back from doing our patriotic duty and uh, doing our uh, pre pre voting voting. So it's a couple weeks early, so we decided to get out of the way. There was like about thirty people waiting to vote. Um, constant constant stream, so the turnout's good. So get out and vote if you can. That's what it's all about. So on the way home, we decided to do anything, you know, something else that's very Americana is um, some Portillo's. Uh, Sassy Sue got, uh, I think she got her, her normal Polish, Polish hot dog. Um, if you're not familiar with that, it's like a smoked, uh, smoked sausage type of sandwich that's grilled and a big chocolate shake. I went with uh, Italian beef and tamale. So we'll be showing you that real soon here. And, and uh, of course you gotta have dessert. And Sassy Sue is gonna unveil that. It's the signature dessert of uh, Portillo's. Which is a Midwest, so Portillo's a Midwestern thing and we'll talk about that later but um, started out as a little hot dog shack and has grown into a multi-million dollar conglomerate. So there's their Portillo's cake. We decided, what the hell, might as well get the whole cake and have it for a couple of days. Now the thing about the cake is you're not supposed to refrigerate it because their frosting, I believe, and maybe even the mix has some type of mayo in it. So it doesn't react well to refrigeration. So they, they tell people don't refrigerate your cakes. So, um, but you know, I don't think this, I don't see this one lasting around here very long. <laughs> Not too long. Not too long. So, um, yeah, that's their awesome, um, chocolate cake. We think cake, cake was like about 20 bucks. The lunch, was uh twenty one thirty nine for two or one drink and two sandwiches and basically two fries. So um all right, let's get to unveiling the rest of this. All right. Let's see what we got. Big order of french fries, crinkle cut french fries. Let's see. Thank you, maybe your tamale. I think this is the Polish. The Ooh, hot pepper. Pickle sport peppers. Mm -hmm. Tomato. Onion. Any cucumbers in there? Or do they still do that? No, no, no. Just tomato, onion. Looks like yeah. pickle. And they normally, around Chicago, the other thing too, is they don't like putting ketchup on hot dogs. Um, some places won't even do it. 
roast beef. Yeah, yeah no Italian, Italian beef. No ketchup. You Chicago's know. known for Italian beef, and this one's a little, they dunk it too. We got the dunker. You don't want it real dry. Looks like it is nice and juicy. Oh, yeah. It's like Italian bread with some Italian mm -hmm. meat and lots of au jus. Look at that. It's it's a piece of art. So, yeah, getting back to the hot dogs and, like, the Polish, there's a lot of, oh, there's uh, there's Charlie. He's uh, He wants his channel to be filmed today, I think. Not now. Later. <laughs> we wanted to see what we got. Yeah. And then the tamale, yeah. That's like uh tamales like um corn wrapped around some uh, like a uh, beef some product. Meat. Uh so you got like a um a maize or a corn um um polenta kinda with some meat in the middle. So I, I opted for that. But getting back to the hot dogs, yeah, there's a lot of like individual neighborhood hot dog stands in the Chicago area and many of them if you ask for ketchup on a hot dog they'll just frown at you and kind of snub their nose and they'll the best you'll get is like a, a packet of of ketchup um it's it's uh, been deemed for whatever reason to be sacrilegious to put ketchup on a good hot dog Gotta have mustard yeah and mustard only, no ketchup. Charlie. Kind of like Coke, no Pepsi from uh, Saturday Night Live and uh, their little skit. Chicago's that way, guys. It's it, They kind of set in their ways and they, some things, oh, and there you go. There's Charlie. Yeah, He's seeing what he can get out of this. Okay. He woke up. He, he said, hey, what you guys up to? You know what, roast beef? No, he just wants to check everything out. So sorry for the lighting. The lighting's a little poor today because it's the weather is kind of crappy, I guess, here in Chicago. It's the middle of October and um we just finished two days of an inch and a half rain. And uh overcast skies and um Today it's kind of windy and um, high of 45, 50. Yesterday it was actually nicer. It was like in the 70s, but just really crow, uh, overcast. So, um, yeah, this is going to go down pretty good here. Nice Italian beef. Italian beef's mine, and I got the tamale. Sue so got the uh, 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 Polish. It's the uh, Maxwell Street, which is... Um, Named after a, a place in downtown Chicago in one of the neighborhood, um, Italian neighborhoods in uh, Maxwell Street. They also had a, used to have a real big flea market down there on Maxwell Street every weekend. And um, it's been since gobbled up by the University of Illinois campus, but um, the name lives on in an awesome Polish. You can see how that meat is kind of sticking out over the edge of the bun. And it's loaded up with fixins, guys. So, uh, all right, I'm gonna end for now, and maybe we'll uh, we'll cut back to some more footage here. So I put a little jardinier, some hot peppers on uh, on that beef, and I also unwrap my tamale. Give you guys a better look at what that's all about. It's uh, just like you said, it's got like a polenta outer. Uh, outer coating and on the inside there if you can see a little bit there's some uh like taco meat or something in there some spiced spiced meat so i opted for that instead of uh the fries it's about uh two bucks two bucks for the tamale and uh sue went for the fries let's see if we can get her tasting her polish here look at that that's a thing of beauty Awesome pickle. A lot of pickles in the Chicago area. I don't know if you guys come from, you get pickles, but a lot of sandwich dishes and stuff uh, come with awesome, humongous 
pickles. Good. Good? Are you liking that? I probably should heat it up a little bit, but <laughs> I've been sitting around. But it's very good. All right. I'm going to go heat it up. All right, well, we're going we're gonna to dig in here, and uh, we'll cut. definitely catch back with you guys before we cut into the cake. Mm -hmm. you got to see mm -hmm. that. Uh, <laughs> all right. All right. Chris is going to start with his tamale. Yeah, I'm not sure if there's a proper way to eat a tamale, but um, they give you a spoon, and um, I just kind of eat it like pudding or something here, and uh, you can see a little bit of meat in the corn or the polenta on the outer edge. Hmm. Kind of like a comfort food. You know, so it's pretty good. Something different from the deep fried uh, French fries. They steam it. It's steamed. They, there's a company that makes them and they just steam them like they do the hot dogs. They have like a steam table so it's not really cooked. It's all just steamed. Now I'm going to get into this Italian beef, which uh, put some jardinier on there to spice it up a little bit, but it's a, uh, mmm, quite tasty. I'm packing a little heat, too, because that jardinier I got is not for the faint of heart. And I think that's also made in Chicago. Let me get a get that jar, show it to you. One of the major makers of uh, oh no, this is not right. Well, this is the generic jardiner. But there's a <clears throat> company called Marconi's that makes some awesome jardiner, and it's usually peppers and carrots and oh. Uh, Onions and um, olive oil and lots of spices um, and some vinegar. So um, that's great on hot dogs and sandwiches and Polish and Italian sausage. So I just put that on my, my uh, Italian beef here and it gave it a little bit of spice. So that's all we have for now. Be back for that, the most important part, which is always dessert. So as you can see, I made um, short work out of that Italian beef. Those hot peppers are making me sweat just a little bit. Thought we'd come back and... Um, Give you a little little history on uh, Portillo's. Um, Portillo's was started by a gentleman by the name of Dick Portillo. In 1963, he started out of like a trailer that you would pull behind your your car, your truck that was shaped like a, a dog house. And he sold hot dogs. Kind of, and I don't know if he had french fries or what, but... He sold hot dogs out of this trailer in the Franklin Park area of Chicago, excuse me, Chicago. Um, and it grew and grew and grew until, um, you know, the mid-2000s, uh, 2000 and maybe, I think, maybe 2015, he ended up selling the company. But, but first we'll, so... From 1963 to 2000 and about 15, he ended up with maybe 30, 35 stores pretty much in the Chicago area. And um, also he had a couple in Arizona, I think the Phoenix area, and maybe one in uh, California and the L.A. area. But pretty much it was con highly concentrated in the Chicago area, not even in southern illinois um and he you know his his restaurants the food is good it's not cheap i mean you get what you pay for type of scenario so if you're looking for a cheap hot dog that's not the place to go um he serves uh, vienna beef and vienna hot dogs i believe 
to this day. And, um, you know, he's um, just maybe four or five years ago, he ended up selling off the business um, to a private equity firm. And um, he still owns the buildings, but he sold the business and he got like $850 million for this chain of hot dog stands. And he still owns the property. Um, so I'll, I'll add a picture of his original hot dog uh, trailer around here, right around this, uh, this uh, little rant here. And also, um, he just recently bought in the last couple of years uh, his own yacht called the Top Dog. Um, I believe it's anchored in the Fort Lauderdale, um, Fort Myers area of Florida where he spends his winter. Um, that's kind of a new acquisition for him. I think it's like over 100 feet, 140 feet yacht. Um, that he owns. I'll, I'll uh, show you a picture of that from the internet. Um, prior to that, um, he had um, a 60-foot yacht that he used in uh, Lake Michigan because we're in Chicago and he was pretty much located here in the Chicago area. I believe he lives in the Oak Brook area, but uh, he enjoyed taking his yacht um, on Lake Michigan over to Michigan and um, um, saga talk and places like that. Uh, so that was his toy until he sold the chain and uh, came into some big bucks. And then it sounds like maybe he upgraded to a bigger yacht, twice the size at least. Um, he also, if, you, if you're interested in his story more and in, in, in depth, uh, he also several years ago wrote a book on um, Amazon. Um, kind of about his his life story or what have you, and uh, I'll find see if I can locate that and um, and uh, put that out there also. So so when you come, to the, I guess the the result is when you come to Chicago, you got to go to Portillo's, even though he doesn't own it today. Um, they're still making good stuff and uh, keeping the the quality up, and uh, it's an experience. All of his. Uh, his stores have their own little theme to them, and um, it's, a, it's a Midwest experience. So um, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm going to be cutting out, and we'll also do the chocolate cake cutting soon, just like a wedding ceremony, guys. We're going to have a chocolate cake cutting ceremony. It's coming up, so just wait. All right. Remember, like, share, subscribe. I'll got the stuff going on underneath here and uh, check out our other videos here at Land Cruiser Midwest. All right. Thank you.